Of all the things that you trust every day, you want to believe that your prescription medicine is safe and effective. The pharmaceutical industry says that it follows the highest standards for quality, but in November, we found out just how much could go wrong at one of the world's largest drug makers. A subsidiary of GlaxoSmithKline pleaded guilty to distributing adulterated drugs. There was reason to believe some of the medications were contaminated with bacteria, others were mislabeled, and some were too strong or not strong enough. It's likely that Glaxo would have gotten away with it had it not been for a company insider. A tip from Cheryl Eckert set off a major federal investigation. She's never told the public what she saw inside Glaxo, but tonight she will. Her story opens a rare window on how one company traded its good name for bad medicine. Cheryl Eckert worked in Glaxo Quality Control, and over 10 years she'd risen to become a manager of Global Quality Assurance. Her job was to inspect plants, like this Glaxo facility in North Carolina, to make sure that the drugs had the right ingredients, the right potency, and met government standards for purity. In 2002, Eckert was assigned to help lead a quality assurance team to evaluate one of Glaxo's most important plants, in Cedra, Puerto Rico. 900 people worked here making 20 drugs for patients in the U.S. But Eckert says that when she saw what was happening to some of the company's most popular drugs, she couldn't believe it. All the systems were broken. The facility was broken. The equipment was broken. The processes were broken. It was the worst thing I, I had run across in my career. The worst because so many things behind these walls were going wrong at once. Eckert says water used to make tablets was tainted with bacteria. Failures on production lines made some drugs too strong, some not strong enough. And the employees were contaminating products, including the antibacterial ointment Bactroban, which was made in a sealed tank to prevent contamination. They were opening up the lid and then they were sticking their body into the tank and scraping it with like a paddle. But this product is supposed to be free of bacteria. Why would they do that? It saved money. As her team continued its evaluation of the plant, Eckert says she discovered something much worse than contamination. Because of failures on various production lines, she says that powerful medications were getting mixed up. Are you saying that different kinds of drugs were packed into the same bottle? Yes, and, and that's shocking. That's yes, it is. Shocking. Eckert says this chart that she produced for company executives shows the kinds of mix-ups that were happening at Cedra. She identified nine, including a Vandia diabetes pills mixed in packages with over-the-counter Tagamet antacids and Paxil antidepressants mixed with the Avandia diabetes drug. When you saw these mix-ups happening, what did you do? I contacted the vice president of quality for North America and I told him that he needed to shut down the factory and call the FDA. Shut the whole thing down. Right. I urged him to stop the trucks that were leaving the dock that day. What happened then? I went back to work and waited for the news that they had called the FDA or that they had stopped shipments and it didn't happen. Eckert says as the mix-ups continued a pharmacist called the company with a story about a mix-up involving the powerful antidepressant Paxil in its 10 milligram dose. The patient was an eight-year-old boy. A grandmother came in to pick up this little boy's prescription and in front of the pharmacist she opened up the bottle she tore off the induction seal and she looked at it and she became upset and she said I knew it his medicine had, has always been yellow but last month it was pink and he's been so sick and what did that mean the yellow and the pink Paxil 10 milligram is yellow it's not pink there is a version of Paxil that is pink Paxil CR is 25 milligrams. If that's what the pills were, the boy was getting two and a half times his prescribed dose. 
Eckert says that she assigned one of her investigators to the case and found that both Paxil doses were made on one production line, which led her to a theory of how the mix-up could have happened. Maybe there was still Paxil in the hopper, the filling hopper, when they switched out the bottles and changed out the labels. So in that batch, some of the first bottles that went through were labeled 10 milligram when they were actually 25. She says she took her findings to the same vice president that she had asked to shut down the plant five months before. And I took it and I handed it to him. And I said to him, you know, read this. And he put his, he put his head down and put his hands over his face, and he said, oh my God, oh my God. Did they shut down the plant then? No, they filed a report with the FDA that said that, uh, that the mix-up was not real and did not happen at the factory. We all knew, they all knew it was real. The Glaxo report to the FDA Cheryl Eckert is talking about said it was extremely unlikely the Paxil mix-up occurred at Cedra. We don't know what happened to the boy because drug incident reports don't contain names. But the Glaxo note to the FDA said there were no adverse reactions. The vice president that Eckerd says she spoke to is no longer with Glaxo and he declined to talk with us. Glaxo denies Eckerd's allegations and it denies that it ever lied to the FDA. In fact, the company was eager to tell us that it has learned from Cedra. Ian McCubbin is a senior vice president from Glaxo headquarters in London. We regret what happened in Cedra, but we've worked really, really hard to resolve those issues. We spend $600 million every year on making sure that our plant and equipment is state of the art. Would you say that the company was chastened by all of this? No, I'd say that the company was very disappointed that this occurred and that we regret that this occurred. But we've learned from it and what you learn from you become stronger. You have how many plants around the world? We have around 80 plants around the world now. Do any of them operate in the way that Cedra did? Absolutely not. So how did Cedra go wrong? I, I, they all operated to the same standard, uh, the same quality system that we had in place. The difference between Cedra and all the rest of the plants was the effectiveness with which that quality system was implemented. It was much weaker and that resulted in the compliance issues that occurred. Cheryl Eckert says that she was issuing warnings and no one was listening. I don't know Cheryl Leckert, um, and I don't know all the details of her um, accusations. What I do know is that we were working with the FDA before Cheryl went to that plant. It was an FDA inspection that first revealed problems at Cedra, and that's why Glaxo sent Eckerd's team in to resolve those FDA concerns. But Eckerd says she found much more than the FDA did. FDA inspections of drug plants are only occasional, so it's up to the drug companies to police themselves. Probably most drugs are safe that people are taking, but there are scary examples like this that certainly raise questions. Dr. Jerry Avorn of Harvard Medical School is one of the nation's leading authorities on pharmaceuticals. He says that Eckert's story is an extraordinary look at what can happen when there aren't enough investigators to follow up on the federal inspections. The fact that there were so many different kinds of problems and that there were even other issues about uh, diabetes drugs and antidepressants on the same line getting allegedly mixed together, um, the sterility issues, it speaks of a really pretty chaotic, out-of-control manufacturing process. This was not apparently one isolated incident. It just looks like nobody was minding the store at this uh, plant. What do you say to someone who says, well, you know, the drug manufacturing process is very complicated, very hard to do. There are bound to be mistakes. Just because something is complicated doesn't mean it's okay to get it wrong. We don't accept that of our brain surgeons or of our airlines or of other complicated things in society. The reason we pay so much for drugs, more than any other country, is that we expect that in exchange for those high prices, the companies are going to actually manage their manufacturing processes carefully. Cheryl Eckert says her first warning to shut down the plant at Cedra came in August 2002. She continued to work seven days a week reporting to executives, but nothing seemed to be changing on the factory floor, and the frustration was taking its toll. The director of manufacturing at the factory, maybe he was the VP of manufacturing at the factory, he pulled me aside and said, you, we can all tell that you've been crying 
You come here every day. And your eyes are swollen because you've been crying. So I want to ask you to stop that. And I said to him, you know, I do cry. I cry at night. I cry in the morning. And what I don't understand is why I'm the only one. Why aren't you crying? After eight months of reporting problems at Cedra, Eckert sent this summary to seven executives detailing nine high-risk areas at the plant, including the mix-ups, the water contamination, and the problems with sterility. She warned that if the FDA knew what the company knew, the government could seize the factory. Weeks later, she was out of a job. Glaxo said it was downsizing. Still worried about patient safety, Eckert took the same information she'd sent to her Glaxo bosses and turned it over to the FDA. Just as she had warned, federal agents executed a search warrant at the plant and ultimately seized effective drugs worth hundreds of millions of dollars. This case goes right to the heart of patient safety. Neil Getnick and Leslie Ann Skillen are Cheryl Eckerd's lawyers, and under the federal whistleblower law, they filed suit on behalf of the federal government, claiming that Glaxo had defrauded the taxpayers. How is this fraud against the U.S. government? Pharmaceutical drugs are paid for by our Medicare program for the elderly, by our Medicaid program for the impoverished. And here we have a situation where Hundreds of millions of dollars were paid for adulterated drugs through our Medicaid programs. Glaxo pleaded guilty to a felony. It admitted it distributed adulterated drugs, Paxil CR, a vandamant, a diabetes drug, Kytril, a drug given to cancer patients, and Bactroban. Altogether, the company paid $750 million to settle the criminal conviction and Cheryl Eckert's suit. Can anything like this happen at Glaxo again? I absolutely hope not. We will work really hard to resolve these issues and make sure that our quality management system is in place and robust. The plant at Cedra is closed. Glaxo says no drugs made there are on the market today, and it says there is no evidence that anyone was hurt by the defective medications. Under the whistleblower law, Eckert was rewarded with a percentage of the millions that the government recovered in the fraud suit. Her portion comes to 96 million dollars. You know that there are people watching this interview who are saying, well, she did it for the money. Right. And to them, you say what? That I hope and I pray that their mothers and their brothers and their children have safer medicine today than they had before I filed that lawsuit. And I believe they will, right? I believe they will.